But anyway, that's what we were taken to Frankfurt, and we were interrogated. They knew all about you. They knew all about you, the Germans. And from there, if they thought you knew anything, they'd put you in solitary and try to get it out of you. Well, I didn't get in solitary. So they knew I didn't know anything, put it that way. <laughs> anyway, he said to me, all you do is say your name, rank, and serial number. So I said, George Hartman, 363283571. He said, uh, how do you feel about coming over here and fighting your relatives? Hartman, Hartman. I said, I'm sorry, sir, I'm but, uh, but I'm of Dutch descent. And oh man, he was instant mad. He had me, but he didn't put me in solitary. From there, we, uh, we went to uh, Wetzlar, Germany, a little camp the Germans run for the Red Cross. There they gave us a care, a care package that was supposed to get us through the next coming win the winter. In that package was uh, toilet articles, tobaccos. Uh, they gave me a pair of pants, uh, long underwear, a homemade knitted cap, homemade knitted gloves, a homemade sweater that was made by an American or a British, either one, because it was through the Red Cross. And that's what they gave us. Uh, two pair of socks, two pair of shirts, an overcoat, and uh, they shipped us off to Pomerania, which is way toward East Prussia, way up on the Baltic. They put us in Stalag with four. It was a camp made for 6,000. There was 10,000 of us. When I came in, I slept on the floor. The diet was, um, I called it dehydrated grass soup or potato soup. We were close to, we had 10 barracks, uh, 10 rooms in the barracks. Each room was supposed to have 16 and there was 20 some in each room. They locked you in four o'clock at night. We had roll call in the morning. Uh, we'd go out during the day and we'd pick over the potato peel pile and we'd make ourselves some potato stew on top of a little stove that we had in our room. Each room had one light bulb. When you divided the food, you had to be very careful. Some rooms used cards. They used two decks of cards. When they drew a number, you had a number. When they drew a number, if they drew number nine first, you were the first one to pick your chow. Then other, other groups had, the guy that doled out the chow, chow was the last one to get his pick, so he made sure that they were all the same size. <laughs> but most of them were potatoes, German brown bread. You ever realize that Germans made bread? They put sawdust in it. They put sawdust in their bread for a little more filler. Uh, they made it in Stettin up on the Baltic. Whenever the British would bomb it at night, uh, we wouldn't get bread for three days because the son of the guns always hit the bread factory. <laughs> never got any bread for about three days. Uh, we got one shower while we was there. One shower, they marched us over to a to a building, and of course after the war we found out that that's the way they gassed some of the Jewish people. They put them in there and thought it was shower, and it was it was some kind of gas that they, they killed them with. Anyway, uh, in February, in, in January, we could hear the Russian guns. We could hear the Russian guns in the in the uh, east, and the Germans said we're going to leave you for the Russians. They'll just kill you anyway. Well. On the 2nd of February, they decided to move us. So on the 2nd of February, 10,000 guys were on the move. We walked, we walked for 89 days, almost 500 miles, living off the land, living off the land. Kalarabis, sugar beets, anything that you could find to eat. Uh, the first 15, 59 days, they wouldn't allow us to have a fire. So picture, your, picture yourself going 90 days without a shower, 90 days without a bath. I'm sure if they had drones over the top, they couldn't fly it because I'm sure the odor would have been bad enough that it would, <laughs> it would have came out of the sky. But anyway, I, I kind of I, I grin about that, but uh, it's just unbelievable what the human body 
human punishment the body can stand. Uh, potatoes, we ate, out, we ate out of milk cans. We had Red Cross parcels, and you buddied up with somebody. I buddied up with a man from California, and uh, that way we had two blankets. We slept in barns, we slept in open fields, we slept in bomb craters in the snow. For 80 some days, we did this. So we were very, very fortunate. Uh, the first 59 days, they wouldn't let us cook, so they would send a kitchen committee out with guards, and it was their duty to find food for us. Most of the time, it was potatoes. When you'd get there, you'd get in line with your milk can, and you'd get maybe a couple of potatoes. But you'd get back in line again, and maybe, maybe you'd get some more, but by the time you get to the front, the potatoes were already turning purple, and I'm saying, my gosh, domain poisoning. <laughs> you know, they were turning purple already. But uh, that's, uh, that's what you lived on, and uh, we managed to survive. Uh, I could tell one little other story, and I, I shall won't go into it too, in too much depth because it, 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 it's, not, it's a comical deal because the guys complained about the, the cooking committee. The cooking committee would, would go out ahead and get the potatoes. Well, they complained, and so he come out one day and we're standing in a snowstorm, roll call, and he says, I fired the kitchen committee. He was standing directly in front of me and he said, uh, would you like to work in the kitchen? I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Food, food. So I went over there and I fixed myself a can of barley. And uh, then I had to go out and a Polish family that was forced labor fixed me a can of sour bean soup. I ate it. At lunchtime, the Oberfeld label come over and said, we got some soup that the guards had, go get it. Well, when we got it, I put my can out there. And when he came out with that ladle, it was full of meat. Mm. Uh, uh, it, anyway, that afternoon, I had to go for another call, and I had to, the Polish family gave me a slice of bread with molasses on it, and I ate it. By 4 o'clock, I couldn't stand up anymore. I had cramps in bed. But I hadn't had my job for a day yet, and I didn't want to lose my job. I told my grandkids about this when they were about my age, 21 years old. I said, your grandpa can't even hold a job for a day. <laughs>